Over a century has passed since the Morris Motor Company was founded in 1913, since William Morris decided to change over production from bicycles to cars. He opened his first motor works in Cowley, Oxfordshire, and began turning out the Morris Oxford Bullnose. A few originals have survived. One is owned by Hammond Yosef Moisa. His was one of the last in the Bullnose series, built in 1926. It was followed by the Flatnose series, which had a conventional flat radiator. That made the car look like almost any other from the period. It was the canister shape of the radiator that earned it the nickname Bullnose. Just like the exterior, the interior possesses a distinguished British sense of elegance. The cream-colored seat and wooden dashboard seem to recall a vintage sailboat. The speedometer is marked in miles per hour. Hermann Josef has added the kilometers per hour around the outside edge. When counting the rumble seat, four people can fit into the open two-seater torpedo. Hermann Josef had his own very aesthetic reasons for choosing this particular car. He knew just what he was looking for. To him, it's a thing of beauty. For one, because of the color, the black and maroon set against the nickel trim. He's always been fascinated by cars, but he wanted to own one that you don't see on every corner, but was still in an affordable range. He describes himself as the average Joe consumer, so he was lucky to be able to acquire the car and to drive it. And the Cowley presented the opportunity because the price wasn't out of reach. He's been intensely interested in vintage cars for some years now. He caught the bug all of a sudden, in particular for the really old cars, the pre-war cars, as the English say. Schnell bin ich da infiziert worden, ja, und dann noch speziell für diese ganz alten Fahrzeuge, also Vorkriegsfahrzeuge, pre-war cars, wie der Engländer sagt. But pre-war cars aren't always easy to start. You have to put some muscle into cranking the engine. Over a hundred years ago, William Morris was aiming to become a well-known maker of high-quality automobiles. But he was neither a trained engineer nor an enthusiastic race car driver. His first car was based simply on his own practical experience. By 1912, he was ready to put his plans into practice and found an investor. At the time, the automobile industry and market were growing by leaps and bounds and competition was fierce. 64 car makers started up between 1911 and 1914, but only 46 were still operating in the years after. Among them was William Morris. Hermann Josef thoroughly enjoys gallivanting about in his cowley, even if it doesn't offer much in the way of luxury. He points out that it takes a bit more skill to drive than today's cars. The gears, for example, aren't synchronized, and there's no power steering or power brakes, nor any of the other modern electronic helpers. The gas pedal is in the middle. That takes some getting used to. And as an English car, it's got its steering wheel on the right. But as Hermann Josef has no desire to pass anyone on the road, that was no problem once he'd gotten used to it. With an engine performance of just 18 kilowatts and top speed of 90 kilometers per hour, passing modern cars might be rather difficult. But Hermann Josef doesn't care. All he uses the car for is a bit of joyriding or a Sunday drive. To him, the experience is indescribably beautiful, especially just coasting along. Nobody's annoyed when he pokes along at 50 or 60 kilometers per hour. He's just out to enjoy the wind and nature and the sunshine. In terms of driving, at least, he can't imagine anything better. 
It's only a few more years till his Cowley can celebrate its 100th birthday. Ammon Yosef is already looking forward to the party.